Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you what you can learn from the Francis TFO forehand to help improve your forehand. Now, Francis has a pretty interesting way of taking the racket back. This is actually something that he did not have as a junior. When he was, I saw a video of him when he was 14, and he takes the racket back like, um, like uh, Dominic Team. You know, the racket's up here, but having the racket down below his hand, even though his hand is high, having the racket tip actually below his hand, something very unique, um, not something that he was taught, I can guarantee that, um, but it was definitely something that he developed over time. Don't copy that about his forehand. I'm not saying that's necessarily wrong, but that's definitely a signature of his swing, uh, nothing that you need to actually copy. But what I want you to notice is this position right here and then from this point forward. I mean, he, he definitely has, you know, somewhat of a loop swing. It's a little next gen, just the way the racket is positioned on the way back. But right here, his swing gets extremely classic. And so a couple things. First, notice his strings are pointing down. This is absolutely vital. Film yourself, look at your forehand on for a topspin forehand, and make sure that your strings are facing down prior to hitting the ball. And the reason for this is it's what gets your strings to face your target at contact. Now, not only do you want to have your strings facing down, but you need your racket below contact. Let's get the racket at contact. We'll just draw a straight line across the, the contact height. Notice his racket is below that point, which means he's going to swing up to the ball. That is vital. That's what gives you the top spin as it leaves your racket. That way the ball goes over the net and then arcs back down into the court. Another thing to notice his non-hitting hand, watch his non-hitting hand rise. I get people sending me videos all the time in my email. I wake up to four or five forehands every morning uh, that people want to analyze. And they always, not always, but I would say four out of five people drop this non-hitting hand as they hit the ball. And when they do that, it impedes hip turn. The hips have a harder time turning into the shot. You want your body rotating into the shot. And by having your non-hitting hand rise... The way you see Andy Murray and Dominic Team, look at it, Victoria Azarenka, look how his hand is going up. His non-hitting hand rises. That makes it easier for the hips to turn. If the non-hitting hand drops, then it makes it harder for the hips to turn because it becomes a counterweight and it goes against what the right arm is doing. The right arm's swinging up and through. So you don't want this arm dropping. You want it rising. That allows for the hip turn to become easier. Now, this is such a cool thing. I want to take you to see, or I want to take you through this where we get to see the angle of his racket path. So his racket is going up like this. Look at the upward angle. I made a video of Feder and um, Rafael Nadal uh, a couple months ago where I compared their upward swing. And I just want you to notice how similar the angle is that after contact, their racket goes so severely up. But I want you to also notice that his racket is slightly closed at this point. If we take this pole as vertical and then we draw his racket, we can actually see that his racket is ever so slightly closed, that his racket is not straight up and down at contact, but actually slightly closed as he's hitting the ball. And he actually keeps that angle as he swings up. This is the key to just getting massive topspin. You want there to be a difference between the path of the racket and where the strings are pointing. So remember, his racket path was 60 degrees. So all we got to do is that. And then there we go. We can see his racket travel up. So he is swinging severely up as he hits the ball. But his racket is ever so slightly closed as he's hitting. You can get away with your strings facing slightly down as you hit the ball, as long as you have enough upward swing and enough racket speed and you're doing it fast enough. Then he goes up, racket is up above his head, but then he finishes back down. But I want to talk about this. You know, so many players, they swing around their body to get to that point. Not Francis. Francis correctly goes up and then back down. Once you go up, you can go over your head like Nadal. You can come back down like Kyrgios and Francis. As long as you're going up, you're good. That's the important part because that's what's going to lift the ball and give the ball spin. Just make sure on your forehands that you are going 
up enough after you contact the ball. Here, his entire racket head is higher than head level. If we get to head level, look, the throat and the head of the racket is above head level. Then it comes back down, but you've just got to make sure that you're swinging up enough to make sure that you're lifting the ball and putting pure topspin on the ball. You don't want to be swinging around your body. And usually players who swing around the body don't get far enough below the ball. Because he's far enough below contact, and again, we already drew this, but I'll do it again. Because his racket is far enough down below contact, it'll necessitate an upward swing. So he's going to swing up from this point. Then his racket comes back down. The key to swinging up is dropping the racket down below contact. If his racket right now was here, he would swing more flat into the ball. Well, then that's when his racket's going to swing around his body and he's going to get side spin on the ball. Because he's dropped down below the ball enough, that's when he's going to get enough upward swing brushing up the back. You'll even see that he does not catch the racket and his left hand and right hand actually finish down by his left pocket. That's, again, not something that I teach typically, but I wouldn't change this about Francis's forehand because he has the components that matter. He's swinging low to high. Now, obviously, he, you know, he took the racket high here. His, what I mean by low to high is the section of the swing that's actually hitting the ball. But his, his racket's high. He drops down low. He's got a beautiful lag. Again, you don't see me teaching lag on here on, on YouTube. I don't teach lag typically because it's a natural movement, especially for players who are higher levels. If you're a beginner or intermediate player who I make my videos for, then I'm going to try to give you more of the 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 bread and butter, not just that, kind of the meat and potatoes of the swing, if you will, the the more base and foundational points of the swing. But you can see a beautiful hip turn into the shot. Strings are facing down, swinging low to high as he hits the ball. But really, take away this. Take away that his strings are facing slightly down when he strikes the ball. But when you do this, make sure that you're swinging up. In fact, he swung up more severely than my my arrow even <laughs> demonstrated. I thought I was swinging pretty much up with the arrow there, but he's actually doing more than I was doing. And that's critical. Make sure that your non-hitting hand is rising as you're hitting the ball as a way, non-hitting hand rising, as a way to make sure that your hips can turn into the shot. So don't copy the, the uniqueness and the individuality of what the pros do with their signatures of their swing. Copy what they almost all do, which is make some sort of a loop swing, whether it's WTA, whether it's ATP, whether it's Del Potro with no lag or, or Francis here with a lot of lag, but drop the racket down below contact with your strings pointing down, swing up as you hit the ball, but keep the racket face angle the same as you swing up, which you can see here. But if, it, if your strings are one or two or three or five degrees closed slightly, as you swing up really fast, you're going to get a tremendous amount of topspin on this ball. Make sure your non-hitting hand is rising as you're hitting. Swing up. And if you want to finish up above your head, great. If you want to finish down by your hip, great. But I would rather you finish just up over your shoulder the way Dominic Team does in a lot of the videos that I make of him just to make sure that you swing up enough. But if you copy these ideas from Francis TFO, there is no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.